call to order this uh, Monday, December 4th uh, meeting of the Waterbury Select Board. First item on our agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? Um, I have a motion to approve the agenda with two additions. One under consent agenda, a first class uh, commercial catering license for Farmhouse Flowers, 2007 Guptill Road, and also to add executive session before adjournment. Before the no, before, before we, we adjourn, adjourn. Oh. as the last agenda item after next meeting agenda. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the agenda with uh, two additions. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We, the uh, agenda is approved as amended. Um, next item is the consent agenda as amended. Uh, we have got four items. Do I hear a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Consent agenda is approved as amended. Next is the public session. Uh, anyone wishing to address anything that's not on the warned agenda, please come forward and I ask you to uh, restrict your comments to three minutes uh, if you can. Uh, anything longer than that, we'll put on the agenda for a following meeting. Uh, I, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Tim Fitzgerald up on uh, off of Sweet Road. I did want to add one thing. Um, I saw in a meeting note in October that uh, the town decided to not use rock salt um, for the upcoming winter. Um, and I guess my commentary would be, I saw it was on a trial basis and uh, travel has been really difficult for the first couple of weeks of winter. And I have significant concerns about um, not using rock salt on a hill like Loomis Hill. Um, when so, the notes oh excuse me somebody had some so tim this is tom white from the town manager um, yes we are using salt so the town has um about 29 miles of these roads that's all right don't quote me on that that's that's off the cuff uh where you we, we chose about three miles of roads where, that we're not using salt on they are predominantly um in the old village of waterbury so loomis hill road places like that uh, we are using oh, okay. Uh, and this was no yeah. negative commentary yeah. about the public works department. I know it's been a challenging couple of weeks with uh, salt, uh, sorry, snow that is uh, pretty much the consistency of cement. Um, but I just saw the notes in the town, you know, the select board notes that said, you know, there would be no salt being used. Um, and so, you know, I kind of, put one and one together and was concerned that we weren't going to be salting, you know, ta uh, town roads like Loomis Hill, Blush Hill, uh, uh, Greg Hill. And I was just concerned about that. But if those are going to be salted, then I am completely good with that. Yeah, those will be salted. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the flat roads, mostly residential, uh, that are uh, being, we're using no salt on a trial basis. If I may, um, Tim, there's an article in the Waterbury Roundabout that it's pretty easy to search and it lists all the streets. So if you did want to follow up and look at that, you're welcome to. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, thanks, Tim. A, a, good, a good message that, you know, the notes were a little bit unclear from the select board meeting. So I just was concerned about that because my wife is an educator at Harwood. So she has mentioned it's been a little bit challenging the last couple of weeks. So that was my only concern, but thank you very much. Okay. Yep, thank you, Tim. Uh, Kelly. Do you want me to come up? Please. And just introduce yourself for the record. All right, I'm Kelly Hackett, I'm from Waterbury Center. Um, I just wanted to speak on two things this evening. The first is um, just uh, formally inviting you to come to our um, our Harwood uh, bond committee meetings that we have been hosting. We have um, one tomorrow night in Warren. Um, we had our pre, um, a bond meeting in Waterbury last week, and I was, it was unfortunate that I didn't see any of our select board people there. So 
would love to see um, some of you make some of those committee meetings. They will be um, um, recorded from here on out. We have one in each of the towns. So uh, you will be able to watch those meetings. There's a lot of great questions that are coming um, forward. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a hefty sell of 92 million, but it's really not that, that amount. We're trying to get feedback on what you would support in, in, within the, uh, the buckets. Um, the second thing I wanted to speak about is that um, I am, my term for a school board is up in March, and I will not be running again. So um, just putting it out there to the select board, I know that you folks uh, have expressed an interest in um, just knowing who's, who's coming forward. Um, I will be submitting a letter to the Waterbury Roundabout as well as reaching out to Brookside principals and sharing um, my letter to try to recruit some Waterbury um, folks to fill the seat. Thank you. I plan I could have a conflicting meeting for the Waterbury one. I hope to make one of the other ones. Yeah, there's, uh, so they're in here. We have all the dates of them. Um, December 19th is the one in, um, actually there's one tomorrow night in Warren and then, um, one on the 14th at Crossetbrook, and then the 19th at Moortown. So one um, pretty much every week until mid-January. Thank you so. for doing those. It's really important. Yeah. Thanks. And thank you for your service. Yeah. Well, thank you. The school board. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. Alyssa. I have two, I guess, if they should go on public forum, which is one to say tomorrow polls are open 7 to 7 in this room for folks to vote on the charter. All eligible voters in Waterbury are eligible to vote. Um, and questions to town clerk. And second, the Planning Commission is having an open house on Thursday for the upcoming zoning rewrite. I'm checking, but I believe 5.30 to 7, also in this room on Thursday for the next phase of the bylaw update. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone up in Zoom land? I'm doing my best on attendance. I've been writing the names down. Thank no? You. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is the Waterbury Skate Park Coalition, uh, which has requested a letter of support from the select board. Uh, Recording in progress. Uh, there mm. we go. Late better than never. Um, I'll just to repeat, uh, the Waterbury Skate Park Coalition uh, has requested a letter of support from the select board for their application for a VOREC grant. Uh, they came before us, I think, at our last meeting, and uh, we did uh, approve uh, or gave our uh, conceptual uh, consent to their expanded uh, plans for an expanded uh, cement skate park uh, up at uh, Dacra, um, not Dacra, at uh, Hope Davy. Comments? Alyssa. Um, I spoke about this at the last meeting, and I guess I would defer to Tom and other municipal staff. I also spoke on the phone with Katarina, our rec director. I have not responded to the kind folks in the Skate Park Coalition who emailed me, um, but I would say I would like to support this project. I would say both at this point, my understanding is both the Skate Park application and the town's application, neither of which have been fully completed. They're both due on the 15th. Um, so my proposal would be that we would authorize a letter of support contingent on final review of both applications with relevant staff just to make sure all ducks are in a row. Um, you know, personally, I want to support the project. I think it makes sense and just want to make sure we're being responsible to all involved to make sure we have two strong, viable applications moving forward. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. Discussion. Uh, Tom, uh, from your standpoint, uh, would a letter of support from the select board jeopardize the uh, rec department's application for a rec uh, application? We don't think so. The, um, the applications um, used to be one application for, for all the grant funds. Now the funds are subdivided into different buckets. Um, so the buckets that we're competing funding for are not the same 
bucket as they are. So I think two organizations from the same town are not going to compete necessarily as they would have a few years ago. And then from the town's perspective, we're looking at some of the accessibility paths um, and then repairs to the soccer field um, at the ice center um, to cover the town's 25% uh, share that would otherwise be field work. So we think that can hopefully be done for free in the end. Uh, is that a plug in? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put in a couple of double power cords. <laughs> oh, you killed it. No. <laughs> fading, <laughs> fading fast. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, further discussion, Mike. Uh, I assume, based upon our discussion last week, that we were going to have a contingency that, in terms of what they're raising, they're going to raise a certain amount of money by a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. cool. Alyssa. Well, I would let the state park folks speak for themselves, but my understanding is this grant application is part of their path right. to attempt to get there to help secure extra funding right. to close the gap that was identified between what they think it's going to cost and how much they need. So I don't, again, have not reviewed the grant in detail, but I don't know that this grant requires matching funds. Regardless, they've already raised some funding. Right. So I think the goal of this application is to bolster their overall right. fundraising. But, but again, I defer to the project. But there was still a significant gap. Mm -hmm. There was, yeah. Do we have any members of the coalition uh, uh, that would like to speak to this? Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Lauren Landy. I, I live in Waterbury. I'm the secretary on the coalition. Um, and Alyssa's correct. We are using the grant um, to kind of fill the gap between our fundraising um, and the spend that we'll need to have. Um, we have, um, I guess, we have roughly $40,000 already raised, and we have uh, two events coming in 2024 um, that are significant fundraising events, and we also have a anonymous donor that's donate, donating um, a large sum of money. So we feel... Um, confident in the ability to raise our, the money um, in order to build the park. Mm -hmm. But you are uh, looking to also raise funds through this uh, VORAC grant, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. All right, any further discussion? Uh, yeah, Bill, come on up. Elementary Waterway Center. Uh, we oh, can't, they, they can't hear you on, online if you don't come up, sorry. My name is Bill Minter, I live at the Waterbury Center, and I'm on the Waterbury Recreation Committee. And um, the Skate Park uh, Coalition has done just a you know, superior job of um, not only raising funds, but raising awareness, getting community involvement. Um, and they've presented plans. They've had feedback from us on the plans, and perhaps you guys as well, gone back to the drawing board and presented them again. And it's just been a, a process of steady improvement. And I um, fully support this request for the letter. Great. Further discussion on this? Yeah. Dave, come on up. So does this letter from the board, they have to come through zoning and planning for this? Sure. Um, does the funding that they are raising, is that contingent upon permits and approvals <coughs> from other boards in the town? Like everything else, yeah. Okay. It's, it's reimbursement-based. Okay. I also think it's an application requirement. So it's a state-level application, and I believe the question is framed around at what status in permitting and zoning are you? I understand. I think they were okay. warned for a DRB, and I, I assume would give that answer. But I've yes. been following it, so I just want to make sure that Mm -hmm. We're all aware of, they'll, they'll of where too. they are or aren't <laughs> in their process with us. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's just that uh, the deadline for this grant is the 15th of December, so, and they're, they are where they are. All right. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Further discussion? Okay. The motion has been made and seconded. If there's no more discussion, uh, everyone in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed? 
Any abstentions? All right. So uh, we'll have a letter of support contingent on uh, the uh, proposal uh, being completed and approved uh, by the rec committee. Is that right? All right. I would just say, like, if you want me to amend the motion, authorize you as select board chair to sign a letter of support contingent on review of the full grant application. Um, I may not be available to sign the letter okay, of support. Then, right, then we'll just say letter of support on behalf of the town. Actually, the upon it. 15th I will be. So, yes. Okay. Great. All right. Yeah, you can, uh, you're, you're doing the minutes, so you can uh, get that exactly as it needs to be. Uh, I think it's approved. All right, moving forward. Uh, discussion of short-term rental regulations. Kane has put forth uh, some uh, proposed initial steps. Uh, Kane, would you like to address these for us? Yeah. Um, if you roll down to the fifth one on the proposed or possible steps, we have a definition that I was not aware of of short-term rentals, and we can strike that. Well, it's not on the books yet, so you're not totally off base. We, we have a <laughs> it's proposed. Yes. Yeah, so, so, just I guess waiting on a definition from uh, the planning commission. Um, and and um, just on that point, uh, you're saying that you're going to propose to use the same definition that the state is using? Uh, for now, I would assume, yeah, yeah, until we have one from the PC. Okay. Um, yes. Um, so there are a few things that other municipalities have been doing um, in regards to short-term rentals and in regards, <clears throat> in regards to short-term rentals in the subject of their housing markets. Um, Everyone, not just Waterbury, our housing markets are desperate. Uh, not enough housing, not enough affordable housing. Um, other towns, especially in Vermont, have uh, rolled out registries for short-term rentals. That includes Airbnb, Verbo, all the sites. Um, that essentially you create a master list of who is renting on these sites and if they're renting for what extended period of time. All it does is it gets you more info and more, um, more accurate information than the state can provide. The state can give you a number, but it doesn't tell you how long they're renting. It doesn't tell you if someone went on vacation for a week and rented out their house for that week. Mm -hmm. But it also doesn't tell you if someone's doing it year-round. And that's the information we need to gather to have an accurate picture of how many short-term rentals are in the town of Waterbury. The state's info is just, it doesn't go deep enough. Stowe recently rolled out a registry. I don't know how. <laughs> Did they pass it? I'm unsure. I know that it was proposed. I don't know if, of its passage. But I know. I know they've got, they're working on something. Um, anyway, there are other towns that have done this. I'm not talking about taking the extreme action that Burlington took. We're just rolling out a registry. I want to get an accurate number. Um, I know that that would help the um, housing task force with trying to get an accurate picture of housing in Waterbury. Okay. Um, out, along these proposed outlines, there are other ones, not just the registry. There's uh, are there are proposals that are akin to uh, or akin to Burlington's. Uh, or parts of Burlington's proposed or ordinance at this point, um, where landowners who already reside on the residence um, may operate short-term rentals on that property, but not outside. That would hopefully prevent large companies from buying property and renting it out for short-term rentals instead of long-term. Um, other towns have rolled out permitting systems that allow for caps on the amount of short-term rentals to limit their impact on the housing market. And then in the extreme, these are all possible. In the extreme, uh, a moratorium on any new short-term rentals until we can establish an economic impact on the town. And um, have you determined if uh, we have the legal authority to do that? I know we have the legal authority to create a registry. <laughs> <laughs> that one I get. Tom? 
had some conversations with our council about this. Um, I guess I would say it's an evolving question. Um, at the same time, I think we have fairly broad legal authority to, to regulate short-term rentals. Um, if, it would, if it would please the board, um, if you feel like we're at that stage related to this, is from a staff perspective, we can do a few things. The first is we can get that question answered and get you a pretty clear opinion about what we can and cannot exactly do. And the second could be, if, again, if it would please the board, is I can work with, with Neil and Mike in planning and zoning, and we can uh, present to you. Um, offhand, I can't promise exactly when, uh, not likely the next meeting, but we can present to you a draft registry, what, what information exactly we'll be collecting, and then some, some strategy for how we actually go about collecting the information. Mm -hmm. So those are options staff can take if desired. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, Mike. When the, Tom, thanks for that information. I think that's really critical. But in regards to number two, where an ordinance that only allows land landowners who already reside on the rented property to operate short-term rentals, I agree with that 100%. The question is, what do you do with properties that have already been bought for short-term rentals, you know, are those, you know, grandfathered? You know, I would assume they they they, they would be because they're already there. Uh -huh. And I assume, as much as I'm in agreeing that I think out of state and management company owned short term rentals are, have become a real problem. All the others, you know, Stowe Stowe is an example. I've have long conversations with Harry Sanderson from Stowe about it and he you know I was I was shocked at the number he said there's 700 short term rentals in 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 Stowe which just blew my mind you know and I know Waterbury we don't have that that amount but it's going to become more and more of a problem because people are going to see the ability to create income off of these properties I know my you know, some of my family just stayed at a uh, Airbnb in, in Stowe over the Thanksgiving holiday, and it was exactly what we're looking at. It was owned by a management company, not owned by, you know, you know, a person. And that's where I think, you know, I'm for because a lot of people are going to be struggling for income. That I think short-term rentals are a way for a homeowner to create some additional income, which I think, you know, yes, it needs to be regulated, but I do think uh, I would hate to deny people that, that chance to, to, to do something with their property to create some additional income to support their families. Alyssa. Um, forgive the phone use just because I got texted definitions before this, but I guess I would say a couple of pieces in terms of context um, our development review board chair is here, and cor correct me if I'm wrong, but our current regulations do not define short-term rental. Um, so the planning commission, as we've all mentioned, per the open <coughs> house this Thursday, is working on updating regulations. Right. They're meeting right now. Shout out. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to the planning commission over in the other room. But um, their proposal understanding is that moving forward for the proposed update of the regulations, which again is covering just a portion of Waterbury, not all Waterbury, but that they create a definite definition of short-term rental. So that's what Kane was saying at the beginning, just to say that that's a process that's ongoing right now. Yep. There's an opportunity for public input Thursday, and we're hoping to have those regulations adopted in the spring when our interim regulations zone out. That will at least give us a definition. So right now there's no definition in the book. There's work in progress to define them. The Planning Commission is not proposing any sort of regulations about where you would or wouldn't have these things. And I guess I would just say from my former time as Economic Development Director, there is a plethora of types of short-term rentals in Waterbury, including but not limited to like ones in the downtown and commercial districts and ones way up in the hills in single-family homes. So I think right. moving towards something that gives us more information would be really positive. Um, I would support Tom's recommendation around getting staff feedback, one in that one our planning director used to work in Woodstock and has done this, um, and two, just their capacity. I guess my concern is we just need to figure out 
how to make it happen, like regardless of what we put on paper, how are we enforcing it? Um, and then the other piece is I, Joe, I think is on, who's the chair of our housing task force, and I was not able to make the last meeting, but he did send us all out as homework, um, a list of potential like goals for a policy regarding short-term rentals. So mm -hmm. again, the housing task force has been looking at this, and part of it is, if we were to propose a policy, what would we want the goals of that policy to be? So reading from their minutes from the last meeting, the three that I'm seeing, and Joe, you can hop in, I see you, um, is that based on the poll of the group on the housing task force, the objectives were one, maximize the availability of housing options by ensuring that no long-term rental properties are converted into short-term rentals, two, reduce the likelihood of investors from out of the area from purchasing homes for short-term rentals that would otherwise be critical elements of the local housing market. Three, ensure that short-term rentals are taxed in the same way as traditional lodging providers to ensure a level playing field. This was from a menu, and again, Joe can give the source. Um, and also just a bullet below that saying, give residents the option to utilize their properties to generate extra income. Um, as you were saying, Mike. So I believe that group is working towards a more formal recommendation. And again, I would welcome Joe if you have more updates or input. But just to say, personally, I think that's a great set of objectives to be aiming towards in terms of recognizing flexibility, but wanting to ensure we're protecting our local rental housing market. Good. All right. Uh, I, I recognize that Dave had his hand up. I want to just get a clarification from Joe if he's available on that on what the intentions of the housing task force are yeah thank you um as Alyssa said we've been looking at this topic um one is really kind of to measure it right to understand the impact that it's having in um in waterbury and also in the surrounding communities just to begin to compare how waterbury compares to for example morristown and some other communities in the area so we have that data that we pull together we're also pulling together what other townships are doing about this. And there's a lot, as Kane said, there's a lot that's going on around the state. So we're trying to bring that all together in one place so that you know, we can have a good feeling for how other towns are approaching it. At our last meeting, we listed, we came up with about eight or nine objectives, which are just general objectives that you find about short-term rentals. And I asked the group to vote on their kind of highest and lowest priority, or three highest priorities, let me say it that way. And we came up with the four objectives that Alyssa just, just talked about. At our meeting in December, what we're going to do is think about possible regulations then um, that, could, that could meet those objectives. And then based on that, we'll come to the select board with a recommendation around how to achieve, how to, uh, how to go forward, sorry. And when would you expect to uh, be able to come before the select board with your recommendations? Uh, late January. Our second meeting in January? Yeah. Yeah, We're going to have four, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, we will be meeting probably every week. Uh, David. Uh, just to speak on the, the definition. If you wouldn't current, mind coming up just sorry. so that everybody can hear you. Speak on our definition and our current zoning rules. The closest thing to a short-term rental we have is a boarding house. Hmm. Um, hmm. The other definition is an ADU, an auxiliary dwelling unit, yeah. which, given the new state law, is essentially used by right. Right. So right. you've hmm. got to be careful when trying to regulate short-term units when you have people who want to put in apartments, yeah. but then may later convert it to a short-term dwelling unit, because they don't they don't have to come to us for that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to hear this from the Development Review Board. These are all great ideas. How are you going to enforce them? That's... <coughs> hear your loud well, play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, there... Uh, and There's no point in regulation that you can't put anything behind. Mm -hmm. I did listen to a recent Vermont edition special on short-term rentals, uh, and they had uh, the uh, head of the select board from uh, Killington and Chester, uh, both of which have instituted registries. And they felt that although they don't have 
uh, very strong uh, compliance uh, enforcement. Uh, they felt as though they were getting pretty good uh, uh, compliance with it just by uh, reviewing what's being advertised and people talking and um, you know, just uh, the, the town's influence on its neighbors. But that still requires someone to do the work to find those units and then enforce the rules on them. Right, and uh, I've got another question for Tom, which is what is the cost going to be for uh, impl uh, implementing a registry and perhaps uh, some of these other potential regulations that we're discussing? Okay. So I can, I can somewhat answer that. Okay. Um, so the 2024 draft budget, which you'll get your first peek at in a couple of weeks, um, will really hope um, will include funding for some for a software package for planning and zoning, which we haven't had before. Um, that's that's a transition away from paper. That's a process. So, um, in, in my mind, I was thinking 2024 is the year to modernize on that front um, to begin some some better enforcement. Now that I think we've got a good good stable staff, what we have now, and then the 2025 budget would probably include. Um, Assuming there's a registry, um, or perhaps a registry and, and some additional steps beyond that, the 2025 mm -hmm. budget could feature a funding request for the enforcement piece. I'm not sure what that would entail at this stage, um, mm -hmm. but presumably it's staff driven. Mm -hmm. And some towns are proposing uh, a fee uh, to accompany a registration, so that, that would be create a new revenue source. It's also going to have to be condition driven and it's also going to have to be some sort of deed or record driven because if I put an apartment on my house now mm -hmm. and rent it out as an apartment but then sell it in five years, how is that new buyer going to know that they, there's something that they need to do if they want to change the status of that ADU? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, Ken. I'll say the quiet part out loud. Uh, last meeting and a few meetings before, we had the state police sitting here asking us to write ordinances so that they could enforce them. Right. We have enforcement. We just have to write the ordinance. I guess I question yeah. if I see our state police contract doing yeah. zoning it's not a it's compliance. Not a um, that was no. more of a public. That's something like you would have a town enforcement official. Yeah, that's that like, that'd be like the building inspector. Right, a building Burlington. inspector. Exactly. And that's, that's not state police. State that's police criminal. ain't going to enforce this is civil. that. Right. Yeah. It, it, it needs to be some teeth in the town staff person that's following up on this, as well as the conditions and stuff that the Development Review Board puts on permits. That's, that's not the least to come up on that. That's, that's zoning administrator, town staff, that needs to follow up on that and make sure those are being followed. But I think to take your point, Kim, like enforcement is a policy and a funding choice. Like we can make that choice right. to create and staff a position as Tom proposes if we need to do that. I think my question is like, to what extent? I mean, it sounds like I think I'm encouraged to hear this timeline um, for January, just in terms of we yeah. talked about the zoning rewrite is already in process. I think this is a question we can anticipate getting in public hearing during that question. And I think us having an answer about where we are, I want to thank Kane for pushing this because I will say I, for one, am on the housing task force and have been like, well, keep gathering the data. <laughs> um, and so I appreciate you bringing it to this forum and I think and moving it forward and highlighting an issue. I guess to me, what what do we see around next steps? Um, I think Tom and staff's input around what is <laughs> legal and practicable, short and long term for municipal staff to implement would be great. I think the housing task force is discussing this in December. We'll both be there, and then we could plan for January to look at a more yeah. formal. I guess I would also think like thinking ahead of town meeting too in terms of public messaging, but. Well, and the other thing is, uh, Waterbury is not the only town 
Big Sur decision, uh, others, uh, for example, the much larger degree, uh, including Burlington, Stowe, Killington, others. Uh, and I think we've got a lot to learn for how they're addressing it and what's, what's effective and what's not. I think it's a little too early with some of these towns to see what's effective and what's not, because all these rollouts have been in the past 365 days. Everyone's rolling out as fast as they can because it's a growing industry and no one knows what the end of the road looks like. Mm -hmm. So as the towns start rolling it out, hopefully eventually the state will step in a little bit. But until that happens, we, we need to, it is my view that we need to at least shield ourselves a little bit and see what's going on on the ground. Because if we don't, we just have an industry in a lot of areas that we don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. So Tom, uh, would you be able to let us know uh, whether we could uh, implement a, a registry uh, yeah. and include that in the budget for 2024? Yep. Yeah. Um, I guess I am reading the chat, which I would not normally. And Amy, do you have a hand up? I do. Yes. I. Sorry, Amy. I didn't see it. I didn't put it up. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so I was just going to offer to that conversation um, something that the Waterbury Conservation Commission is considering are things um, more of a short term, um, I guess, approach to governance. So following on that conversation around thinking about, OK, you've got budgets that are going to support hiring resources and then you've got to think through processes and how you're going to do that. Um, something that we're looking at as an interim to how we to fulfill longer range goals like that are putting in place like checklists. So when projects are being reviewed, they're reviewed um, with like some screening questions in mind. And perhaps there might be something at the development review board level or the planning commission level that um, they could adopt something of that practice that might help. Um, kind of get a handle on Airbnb permitting requests or things like that as they're coming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's currently no requirement to request a permit for an Airbnb. I'm sorry, Dave, could you repeat There's that? No, there's currently no mechanism or, or requirement to request a permit right. for a short term rental. Yeah, there is no permitting process, right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so we have some work to do. Uh, Tom is going to get back to us with. Uh, some answers uh, that came up during this discussion. Uh, the development of the housing uh, task force is going to be addressing us uh, in January. Um, anything further that you would like to be done? Has somebody else got their hand up? CG had his or her hand up. CG, I think that was Lauren. Looks like civil. Uh, okay. Uh, well, Sybil? Oh, Sybil's iPhone? Oh, yeah, Sybil. Sybil's iPhone. You have your hand up? I think that's the cursor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go just testing you, Roger. <laughs> uh, Danny, we didn't hear any of that. Uh, at least I did. Sorry, go ahead. Um, their hand was up for quite a while, but then it came down. So they might have gotten their question answered or needed to walk away. So it's all good. Okay. All right. Any decisions that need to be taken tonight other than what we've already discussed? No? Do we need to, I don't think we can. I don't think do we, we need have the to authorize well, Tom I mean, to, in, in, to, to begin. I think I've got that. Yeah, you've got the option. Okay. And I would say there will just be a Zoom for the next housing task force meeting. Sorry, Joe, in advance, but if folks do want to let weigh in on a more nuanced level around specific policies, that mm -hmm. will be an agenda conversation. Just thinking about that's going to be one form ahead of our next meeting in January. So for folks with whatever interests that want to get more into the weeds of what policy, mm -hmm. that's another forum that's available. Yeah, um, you know, I read uh, the a few minutes uh, in preparation for this meeting of the Housing Task Force uh, and uh, noted that Skip uh, Flanders, uh, one of the issues is that we're, 
not only trying to control short-term rentals, we're also just trying to expand the availability of long-term rentals. Right. Uh, and Skip was looking into <coughs> what incentives could be devised to expand the availability of long-term rentals. Uh, and he talked with Joel Baker, who's one of the uh, developers in town, uh, who was talking about reducing the permitting fees. Um, and we could have some hearings on, on to what extent that would really be effective in expanding uh, the availability of long-term rentals. Uh, I also talked with Aaron Flint, who's also a developer in town. Um, and he was looking for just a, a more even playing field. Uh, he feels that uh, as a developer of long-term rental units, he gets a lot of regulation, uh, whereas people put up short-term rentals with uh, apparently very little regulation and he feels like uh, just to even out that playing field from a permitting standpoint would make sense. He also suggested that uh, we look at uh, lot sizes and uh, parking requirements which I believe are being reviewed uh, by, the, uh, um, uh, by the planning commission at this moment. So all of those are still in play as far as I understand it. Okay, any further comment on this? Hearing none, let's move forward. Uh, the FEMA buyout conversation. Uh, we have our first application for a FEMA buyout at, uh, is it 36 Union Street? 36 Union. Potentially one other uh, Union Street. Is right, the and name? possibly North Main Street as well. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, Tom, would you like to talk to this? Sure. Um, the, the most important thing uh, to talk about here is outlined in the deed restriction. And it's really the bottom of the first page and the second page. And the, the long and short of it is that um, state emergency management through FEMA uh, the buyout is ultimately approved, um, has to be approved by the select board first. Normally there's a 25% local share. As of right now, the state is covering that share. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that 25% share is going to be in place forever, so I've encouraged property owners who are interested to start the process. Um, property owners will get a, um, eventually get an appraisal um, from FEMA that is based on the pre-flood value if they accept that number. Essentially the process can go forward. Um, state emergency management paid for by FEMA essentially levels the property um, and gives us a clean site. Um, FEMA covers the cost of deep construction? Correct. Um, in the end, that property has really substantial deed restrictions, cannot be developed. Um, we could use it for recreation and we could put some very minor structures associated with that. We could put, in theory, public bathrooms. Um, so when I say minor structures, think concrete footers for playgrounds, but essentially no impervious service, no major developments. I've inquired about a parking ride and the answer is yes, that's, that's possible. You cannot put gravel or shot rock or anything down. It's mm -hmm. a dirt parking ride. Um, we can convey it to a third party, but those same deed restrictions apply. If the third party is a private sector and not a conservation organization, uh, some other local nonprofit, um, it's got to be approved by the federal government, and it's a little bit of a higher standard, if you will. Mm -hmm. So the, the simplest and best way to think of it is it's ours for it's ours forever. Um, we don't have to maintain it. We can have we can simply let it grow and become forested. Um, we can we can mow the lawn if we want. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of our grand list, the property has a pretty low value as of today. Um, so in terms of tax revenue, it's, it's you know, five, six hundred bucks a year, not a, not a meaningful amount. Um, same would apply to the property that's being looked at. So from a revenue perspective, it's really, a, really mostly a non-issue, I think. Um, and, and I think the, in addition to deep restrictions, I just want to reiterate that the 25 percent um, now that's that's not our cost. That would normally be our cost. It is not the cost today. Um, the other piece is this property um, is on the market as of today, and so the owner um, 
You know, nothing here binds the owner at this stage to anything. Uh, mm -hmm. So if the owner gets a favorable number and wants to sell the property, they can sell the property. Mm -hmm. And then the new owner could also uh, apply for a... Uh... I don't believe so. I believe there's an ownership requirement that lasts a period of time. I don't know offhand what that is. Mm -hmm. um, and I had an inquiry from um, another property owner who was commercial. Um, and the answer is if it's, it's for a primary residence only. Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I do recommend that, that we go forward with this. Um, the property was, was, I think, pretty badly damaged during Irene, um, pretty badly damaged again. Um, I, was, I was inside of it after or post flood, and it's, it's not great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pictures are up on Zillow. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. And I, I just think in the end, this would be a property that um, we'd have to give them a fair amount of assistance during any future floods. Yeah. Uh, which, which, as we all know, is a Right. That would be my concern is that are we going to be facing this again? Mike. The only question, as much as I'm for this, it's very similar to what our USDA deed restrictions were, so I'm pretty familiar. Nothing raised. The only thing I'm concerned about, and it's probably a non-concern, are there any hazardous waste issues that we have to be concerned about where, where this could be, you know, underlying where this could be a brown field or something like that, you know, if we take ownership? Not to my knowledge. Um, that is in the second part of the packet. Um, so that's, that's part of the review. Right, I um, saw that. Done by the federal government, and I. But it's a little check off or something. I don't have um, all the details at this point, and this just came in late last night. Um, but the long and short of it is from conversations is the federal government does their own testing. As okay. part of the process, so we should get a clean site. So FEMA, okay. so FEMA would not move forward if it was uh, had uh, brownfield consequences. That that I'm not 100 percent sure of. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't gotten that far with the hazard mitigation officer of the state. Okay, I think that would, you you would be correct on that mm -hmm. assumption. Wow. Well, well, Roger loves pocket parks. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. It's not bad invitation for one. Yeah. We have some abutting landowners in the audience tonight. Uh, <laughs> would you care to comment on this? Yeah, I would. Tamitha, come on up. Tamitha Thomas Hossie, Waterbury. Um, I would just hate to see another person go through what we keep going through down there. So I think that, you know, a, a, a little park, a, you know, anything that the town would own and then keep the town from having to continue to bear the burden of continued flooding would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. CG this time. Sorry. Uh, yeah, CG. And could you identify yourself, please, for the minute? Good evening, everyone. This is Cheryl Gore, and I'm sorry if I missed it, but where is the property located? 36 Union Street. 36 Union. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's right down where uh, the armory, Ar Armory Ave. Yeah. Armory Ave comes in uh, and tees into uh, Union Street, uh, close to the bridge. With a turn to the FEMA disaster center. <laughs> Well, how That's convenient. the best way to describe it. <laughs> I don't think it's there any longer. No, but it was. Uh, yeah. It was there long enough. Um, do we have a motion? Tom, do we uh, need a specific motion? Is it mandated by the federal government? You need a motion. Um, you'll need to sign this. We'll need to work with Karen to get it notarized, and the county party will need to do the same. So yep. you need, need a motion to uh, authorize the select board to approve and sign it. And at this stage, nothing is binding, of course. Mm-hmm. But it's a first step. I make a motion for the select board to approve the FEMA buyout for 36, 36? Yep. Union. 36 Union Street. I have a second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? King. Uh, well, I just wanted to say, well, it breaks my heart that we lose a house. <laughs> 
in this big discussion about housing we've been having over the last year. I, it, I, I would feel terrible if another family went through flooding on that street, and I would prefer it be a pocket park than have another family have to suffer through that. Yeah, and, and you already mentioned that it's not a great spot. It's going to happen on Irene 3.0. No, don't even. Okay, any further discussion? You can go ahead. Uh, come on up. I guess to your point, Kane, I just want to say I think it's important that we focus on um, nice housing for people, right. <laughs> but just because, you know, people don't have the money to live in places that, you know, it's just that's something right. I think a consideration. And so, yes, a pocket park rather than a family, you know, who maybe can't afford to live in other places in the in the town have access to places that are not in the floodplain. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We have approved the buyout, uh, or first stage of the buyout for 36 Union. Next thing on the agenda is the uh, appraisal and ARPA updates. Tom? Sure. So um, back in July, there was a resolution approved to transfer some ARPA funds. Um, we still have some time to spend the ARPA funds, or the select board had made a decision to allocate uh, some of those towards our reappraisal costs. Um, we're likely to be ordered to reappraise next summer, um, and there's, there's a fairly long time horizon with that, so there's some chance we wouldn't be able to spend the ARPA on the reappraisal by the deadline. Um, what we can do is uh, reimburse ourselves for uh, general government expenses with the ARPA fund. So what this resolution does is it, it simply um, moves funds from the ARPA bucket to the town's uh, what's called the undesignated fund balance. Um, think of it as moving funds from a special savings account to your to your checking account. Mm -hmm. They're still there. We're not actually spending it. It's an accounting entry. But from that perspective, uh, from a reporting perspective, to the um, from a reporting perspective, as far as the federal government is concerned, the ARPA funds would be fully allocated if this is approved. Mm -hmm. um, the state is studying the reappraisal issue. I'm I'm really hopeful they'll they'll take it over at some point relatively soon, but we may have to go forward with our own effort. Um, we do think at this point about $200,000 uh, would be the cost. Okay. And uh, your recommendation is that we move all the remaining uh, ARPA funding? Uh... Yes, because uh, just the 200000 is what remains. OK. Mm -hmm. King. Did we just discuss this in July? I thought we had a, I thought, I thought we had a motion to move it. Uh, it was moved, except for the reappraisal. Except for the reappraisal. One little, one little time to uh, determine the status the of that. And, and see what our status would be. Gotcha. Right. Okay. What happened is the the old rule was um, there was an eighty percent rule. Once the state believed your your appraised values were eighty percent of the market, they made you reappraise. Uh, there's a second data point. Um, within that that they call the coefficient of dispersion, which is sort of your, your confidence around their number. And they've now said 80% or the, the coefficient's got to hit a certain point. So we, we met the test for the coefficient. Um, since reappraisal is a big effort, um, no point in doing it until you're ordered to do it. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the state may decide to uh, take it on themselves. They may at some, at some point. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful they will. Okay. So does that mean that property valuation in Montpelier is going to do all town reappraisals? Yes, um, with with significant consulting help, and I'm sure some local input. Right, they'll have to, but, because they don't have the staff to do everything. But with this, what the proposal that was discussed last year, which which didn't go forth, they they determined that we need some more study. But what was discussed was, um, in essence, dividing the state into regions. I think counties simply doing them all at one time. You get some economies of scale. Right. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, town boundaries are not necessarily real estate market boundaries. Right. Um, so there's, I think, an efficient little, little, little better way to do it on a regional basis and probably to save costs for everyone. So that's why I think it, the proposal made, us, made a lot of sense. 
Do I have a motion on the reclassification of the two, uh, remaining $200,000 in ARPA funding? I make a motion to reclassify the designated $200,000 for town reappraisal back to where we were going to... Uh, these four lines in the bottom. Right. Um, to... Uh, to uh, as, as noted. general government regular pay, lister regular pay, planning director pay, and zoning administrator pay. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any? Danny, you're opposed? I think she was delayed. No, there's a delay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that was the A. <laughs> Just clarifying. Okay. Um, now, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. It is approved as moved to reclassify. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Armory Ave uh, High Street land use. Uh, Tom, can you address us? Sure. Um, interesting, different conversation you had in town hall when your zoning administrator was a real estate agent and thinks of land a little differently sometimes. <laughs> but we, we own 3.3 uh, acres along Armory, um, right across from the school, essentially from High Street to Hillcrest Terrace, the whole parcel. A um, piece of the land is permanently preserved, um, and that was um, part of an agreement that uh, my predecessor negotiated to build this building. That this built this land, Dak Row, was bought using um, Land and Water Conservation Fund dollars, which is a federal source. This land had to be permanently preserved for recreational purposes, uh, since there was a chunk of it used for that. A chunk was added um, off of our so drive. trade. <laughs> Was a trade um, took some took some time and effort for that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, the school has uh, the, so that's that is preserved in the deed, um, so that is there forever. Um, there's a there's a building which is not in great shape. Um, there's an engineering report the town has that's a few decades old that essentially says that a heavy wet snowstorm is going to make the roof collapse. Well, that'll never happen. Still standing for now. <laughs> um, but we share storage space in that building with the school. Um, right now we have um, one of our new public works trucks that we had three months ago. And, and you know, we've got a chassis but no body. We're waiting for that. Um, we keep the sidewalk plow there. Um, a few other minor things, you know, some of the mowers for the winter are stored there. The mowers we use down here. Um, the school has all sorts of stuff there. Um, and there's an agreement related to parking. It's not a deeded right, but it's an old agreement related to parking. Um, we're going to meet with the school soon enough to discuss that. But you know, anecdotally, we think the school needs 15 or 20 spaces. And so there's, there's likely a way to, to move the line a little bit and perhaps re rearrange the parking to give them that room. But the, the long and short of, of what we think from a staff perspective is um, despite the encumbrances on the lot, despite the parking needs, uh, the other piece I didn't mention is um, on the far side of the lot, there's a walking path from the school back to the preserved land that's pretty actively used uh, during the school year. So we'd want to preserve that. Um, mm -hmm. Despite all that, it appears to, to us that there's some, there's some land um, on both sides, on both High Street and Hillcrest, that could in theory be developed. Um, I've talked to Public Works, uh, Bill Woodruff, and other staff, and, and part of my message was that it's really hard for a town to buy property. Um, it's really hard for the town to negotiate and, and get, a, get a reasonable market price. Um, anytime the town wants to buy property, work gets out pretty quick. You're perceived to be a rich buyer. So I said, I don't want to be short-sighted and give up land that we might regret in 20 years. And, and the answer is um, no one can come up with a plausible idea uh, that 
you know, any way we'd use this. Bill Woodruff has said he needs the storage, uh, so he really wants to maintain the storage, mm -hmm. um, which which the school also needs it too, presumably. So we want to maintain that, uh, but they've been very amenable to carving out some some pieces of land um, and. and I've been kicking around a little bit of ideas internally, and so the thought is, if the select board has an interest in us investigating this further, we could, um, I think a logical second step is to um, work with legal counsel, make sure we have 100% clarity on the encumbrances of the land, talk with the school and make sure that they're, um, they're not vehemently opposed and hopefully amenable to some of the changes and, and potential development here, and then talk to the housing task force um, about maybe some of the some of the options that that from a staff perspective could work um, after that if we pass those hurdles which are not insubstantial so we may not um, we would come back to you presumably for some some public input process mm -hmm. um, and then obviously any sort of permitting um, any of that would go before the relevant boards mm -hmm. so you, you discussed what parts you're not looking to develop, but what, how much land are you looking to uh, develop and potentially? You know, off the cuff, so. if the goal was to maximize development there, and I'm not sure it is, and that's, that's why there's, this is the start of a conversation, but if mm -hmm. the goal was to maximize development, um, I think you could, in theory, um, on the high street side, uh, perhaps have uh, somewhere between three tenths and a half of an acre um, to be used for development, and um, that could accommodate a fair amount of housing. Um, and and similarly on the Hillcrest Terrace side, I think a similar size lot could uh, could fit. Isn't that Armory Street? It depends who you talk to. On half oh. the maps, it's Armory Street, and half it's Armory Drive or Armory Ave. Okay, but where's Hillcrest? Hillcrest is the top. The top cross street. So if you're behind, if you're behind the elementary school. And you're uh, oh, the cross is past the storage shed. Past the, the other shed. Okay. Right. On the other side. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's there's encumbrances on the land. I'm I'm sure the neighbors will be highly interested. The school's got a got a vested interest here too. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but you're not going to mess with the uh, light pole, uh, correct? Well raised light pole, correct? Uh, we want to leave that. We want to leave that alone and, and be careful that anything proposed would uh, would not necessarily impact the view of that. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's not an easy lot to develop per se. Um, no. But our thinking is, it, it doesn't um, it doesn't cost us any money to pursue these ideas, and it could result in uh, potentially some new housing being built. It could result in um, could result in the town selling a lot, um, which would be a cash infusion to the town. Um, the main focus is just thinking about the housing crisis, and I think everyone seems to use that and agree on that word crisis. And if there's if there's if there's a lot, or perhaps a few lots that can be developed, it would be I think uh, worth their interest in exploring that. So all we're asking at this stage is. Is some blessing to, to go forth and, and try to try to explore this and see if it can be advanced. All right, Alyssa. I'm just noting it looks like our internet connection is unstable, so apologies to the friend at home. It's been a rough internet day in Waterbury for those who have been here. Um, Tom, could you just repeat the two streets that potentially would be developed on? Um, Sure, so the, the bottom of the parcel um, at the intersection with High Street and then the top of the parcel uh, near Hillcrest Terrace. Thank you. So on each side of the garage? Yes. Of the, uh, yeah. Yeah. So you're okay. just looking at that skinny strip? Uh, no. It's pretty good sized <coughs> chunks. Uh, on the... Are, are they looking at this, this whole, the whole white area? Mm -hmm. Yes, but... Right. The, I think the town is going to maintain the uh, old armory building, which is now a storage shed, as well as a certain amount of parking yeah. uh, directly uh, east of or west of there. 
and then so the developable areas would be so all the hatched area can't be touched. Cannot be developed. Right, that's right. conserved. Right. And we would want to maintain um, a walking path towards it, which is currently um, above the armory building, you know, which the school uses to get into the thatched area. Mm -hmm. And the pole. Uh, is pole is about where the uh, line of the conserved area is. Yeah, I believe. Uh, yep, it's marked. It's a small circle. Oh, there it is. And it's in the that it's in the first thatched area. Okay. Well, I don't get you know where it says land, you know, land conversion for library and land conversion for fire station. <coughs> the fire station was an earlier agreement. Okay. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. <coughs> yeah, so everything thatch, regardless of the thatch, is, is off limits. Okay, so all the thatch, it's, it's basically where the parking area, the shed, and behind that is. That, that's yeah, so I, I think in theory that the, at the bottom of the hill, uh, towards the bottom of armory, the longer rectangular parking area, right. that could potentially um, be moved a little bit and shortened to give a little more room for development. And to give perspective, just down the road in the high street um, is a nine-unit apartment building, and that's on uh, about a half an acre. So mm -hmm. I'm not proposing offhand a nine-unit apartment building, but I'm just giving that to illustrate. It doesn't take a lot of land, but a pretty substantial amount of housing. Mm -hmm. And all this is developed downtown, served by water and sewer. Yeah, that's key to developing <coughs> housing. All right, do I have a motion for the town to further explore this uh, opportunity? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Surely, David. Not, Not a word. Okay, hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, and I'm not opposed. I'm waiting for <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, any abstentions? All right. The motion carries. And we will. Uh, do you have a time frame, Tom? When I do not. Um, and much of it doesn't depend on me. I'm going to be focused on the budget and right. all that ready. Um, yeah. You know, we're moving into the holidays. I would, I would hope we'd have something before the Housing Task Force in about a month. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and Roger, two points just to say out loud is that as the minutes will reflect, this is just a preliminary investigation of staff looking around potential constraints. And the map that we were provided will be in the minutes for this meeting, which will be posted on the right. municipal website for folks correct. who are interested. It's just a copy of the deed of the property. Yeah. This one, I, I Quite well noted. It's, a, it's not a staff proposal, it's a proposal. They're investigating constraints. Hmm. Okay, um, before we go into executive session, shall we discuss uh, what will be on the uh, agenda for the 18th and then also decide the dates for meeting, uh, the first meeting in January? Yep, and Cheryl did have her hand up, it just went down again. Sorry. Okay, uh, Cheryl? Um, here's my concern with the high street development. There is already a problem with people who go to visit their family on High Street because of the parking situation with the school. Um, taking away some of that parking lot might cause more of a consternation. This is something to think about when you guys are looking at constraints. Um, uh, there's times I go to help my parents and I can't park. I have to park in another neighborhood to get to their house, which is not right. So if you're gonna add more housing, it's going to take away more parking where the parents are supposed to park, which they don't, but they should. Um, it, it could be a really big constraint for the people that live on the high street area. That would potentially be an, another parking uh, bigger issue for those people that live on that street. Many people do not have um, uh, garages, so they you know, pull into their parking lots as best they can in the winter. Uh, but tend to obviously park on the street in the summer. So I just want to point that out for folks that do live on High Street. Um, that could become a bigger issue for them. Thank you. 
Thank you. We'll ask the town to uh, take that into consideration on their further exploration of this uh, option, potential option. Okay. Um, next meeting will be the 18th of December. I will not be here. I uh, just want to make sure that we have the chance to have a quorum. Is everyone else planning on being available? Danny? And Karen had, had sent. And as she no, sent no. about the Board of Civil okay. Authority, it's going to meet at 6. Right. So we have one abatement request, and, I, and we have uh, one individual who has requested an abatement. I've, I've gone through, told him about the legal process. He's got the form in front of him. He has promised me he will be filing it, so we may have two. Okay. And so that will, well, the Board of Abatement will be meeting at 6. The Select Board will be meeting at 7. Uh, what else do we have proposed on the agenda for the 18th? Um, skip. Yep. Oh, Go just, ahead, Danny. We just lose the internet again. <laughs> oh. the time. You froze. No, you're back. It's a good push. <laughs> Uh, we can't hear you very well, but I can, I think, address your issue because I did talk with Skip, uh, who did say that uh, you had asked him, Danny, to uh, give an update on EFUD uh, on the 18th, uh, which I think would be great. Um, so we can put that on the agenda. And you can let me know how much time uh, I can talk with Skip as to how much time he might need to address uh, those issues, which would include um, plans for EFUD's uh, expansion to serve a, um, a mobile home uh, facility, uh, the uh, sh uh, shopping area uh, near the uh, cabin annex, and uh, other issues uh, that are facing EFUD. Yeah. When you say mobile home facility, do you mean like a mobile home park? East Wind Mobile Home oh, Park. Oh, East Wind, okay. Yeah, East Wind, I guess it's called Mobile Home Park. I just, I was like, is it a place that makes mobile homes? I didn't think what you meant. Not yet. Um, yeah, no, the East Wind Mobile Home Park. Um, and so, yeah, we've got that. Anything else that uh, people are aware of? Alyssa? I was just going to ask Tom, is there anything budget related at that point, or is it yeah, too I'll early? Have, I'll have a full draft. So just that light agenda item. Yeah, that is full draft, draft, draft budget. Draft, full draft budget. <laughs> <laughs> for 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 you. Most, most of the light agenda. <laughs> but we're not going to be updating each no. line item at that point. No, I, I'd like to. Overview. I'd like to give it a full overview of some of the major decision points, and there will be some some moving parts where the numbers will have to still coming in will change a little bit, but I think it'll I think it'll be um, I'm not going to give you a budget that get that says there's a four percent tax increase when the real number is going to be negative three or plus ten. It'll be pretty close at that point, I think, to from from the perspective of accuracy. There's always there's always a desire to massage it because you've got your actuals for the year um, by the time January rolls around, but at the same time, we've got years of actuals, so one month is not going to change the analysis dramatically. With the coming budget coming up, um, you know, with the recent <coughs> announcement of that property taxes are going to go up 8 to 18%, can we as a town have <laughs> some sort of opinion on that? I think I would qualify. I'm pretty sure that was like a preliminary forecast. I, I know. I'm pretty but sure it needs to go through a few more it's steps. It's pretty <laughs> Just preliminary, but it sounds pretty definite. I, yeah. The, gov the governor saying. came out today and said he's t totally against it. You know, he said these, they're going to have to work with the legislature because I know that's going to, you know, if you look at the numbers, you're looking at a, a, a $600 increase on a $200,000 home. So you just multiply that by if your house is worth more, you know, that's good. that's going to be a serious 
increase for a lot of folks. I guess I would say as a board member, regardless of the financial circumstance, I want to make prudent, responsible financial choices right. for the town. And for I think town. that's a value we share regardless. I'm not saying that might further enhance it, but I guess for me, that would be a starting point regardless of right. what else was happening. Because I think in the last few years, we have taken the, you know, trying to keep a revenue neutral kind of budget, you know, because we know that the increases are really in the education budget, but, you know, to minimize either, you know, keep our budget, you know, zero based or, you know, a slight increase or a slight decrease. And I think that is something that I know I would propose at least come going. I hope I could just, you know, <coughs> recommend that. I don't think I'm gonna deliver anything unreasonable. I'm pretty getting pretty close. Right. So um, I don't think it's gonna be a zero percent, but it's gonna be um, you know, when I presented the numbers in the local option tax, I said that uh, the, the 20 years I went and looked back that we've, we've averaged 5% um, annual increase in spending. Our grant list tends to grow about 1%, so the taxes are more like four. Um, the goal, I think, every year is to is to be at or under that number. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. what I've said to department heads is that um, hopefully 2025 we'll have a local option tax, and that that changes some of the right. some of the dynamics significantly. So this year, um, keep your budgets a little lean. Stay fairly lean. We don't want to be silly and defer anything we need to do. Um, but if we'll have the option of, of paying cash instead of borrowing, things like that in the future, I think we want to we want to keep our powder dry in that in that respect. Right. And and you know, Gary did come before you some months ago and talked about a fire truck and getting that on the ballot, but we wouldn't need to pay debt on that in twenty twenty four. We would not have to. <laughs> we would not have to. Um, because we'd just be placing the order and not taking we, ownership yet. We could take ownership, um, but we can structure it so that we wouldn't pay debt until a future right. oh, okay. Um Public Works, we're having, um, they may well come in 2024 before you and request to place an order where they wouldn't pay anything for 2025. Um, but to illustrate one of their challenges, we're having this debate internally about what we purchase for trucks. The tandem trucks hold 15, 16 yards, and we're going down to Barry now for every load of gravel. The, you know, the, the more typical plow trucks hold five or six yards. Um, so do we want to buy the tandem and, and triple our hauling capacity at the same time? If we triple our hauling capacity, we really should dedicate a staff person to hauling all the time, which means that person's not doing any actual work. Um, well, that's, so we're, that's actually well, work. more truck driving. <laughs> we're we're truck truck. You gotta watch it. Every truck driver He's just in there listening. Truck drivers would take We still need truck drivers, so let's not And we're, you know, we're looking at different options about hiring contractors to haul things for us. But if we, you know, we're looking at different options about hiring contractors to haul things for us. But if we, you know, if we, if we buy, you know, an F three fifty that can haul five yards, we might have it in a year. If we get the tandem, it seems like it's more than it's about two now. Two years wow. out? Yeah. Huh. yeah. And it would be dedicated to, to hauling it. Yes, not 100% dedicated, but essentially dedicated. Mm -hmm. um, that's, we and do we need that, or do we need that <coughs> much hauling? I mean, we, we average three to 4,000 yards of sand a year. That's 200 trips for sand alone, um, gravel and crushed stone. Um, depending on what we do is about it is a similar number so if it's 600 trips along to, to south barry i mean you can do a bunch a of, in a day it's a lot of diesel but it's a lot of it's a lot of hauling um, and if we want to do you know a, a bigger a bigger road project mm -hmm. um, you know pick a thousand couple thousand feet of a, of a gravel road you know throw in another few thousand yards right there so it's a substantial amount of work and we do have another gravel Saw it with Duxford coming yeah. up, right? Yeah, no, we've always had we've always had one tandem. Uh, so the question is, do we do we go to two? I would love to attend the gravel summit. Well, I'll invite you. Yeah. 
Okay, well, Ian, you're going to come up with a recommendation. That's, that's too many variables for people like myself. We, 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 we need to get our own bit. <laughs> we do, but there's no place. I know. know. Yeah, at one point, I, I don't recall the specifics of the, the conversation I've had with Public Works. I'm guessing it didn't go anywhere. Let me get back, let me get back to you. All right. Okay. There's train options for salt uh, to some some towns not too far from here are closer to a rail line and do it for salt. I don't know if anyone doing it for stone and gravel sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, transfer, the transfer might be difficult. Difficult and costly. Um, okay, so I think that may be enough for December 18th. Uh, yes. The next meeting would be Thursday, January 4th, due to holidays and Tom's availability. Does that work for everyone? Yes. Yep. Okay. And then uh, following up, uh, assuming we need to have further budget discussions, Monday, January 8th. And then again, we got holiday. Uh, Skipping a week there. Yeah, I guess we could meet uh, either the 17th or the 18th if needed. Otherwise, we'd be meeting on the 22nd. <coughs> I can't do the 18th. Maybe let's just see where we're at at the 8th. We'll, like, yeah. You know, and that may determine if we're going to need another meeting. Yeah, but we, we'll keep the 22nd and then uh, 29th again right. if necessary. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. That's clear. Uh, do I have a motion to go into executive session? Session. Um, remove that premature public knowledge of pending real estate matters would clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Someone please say that. <laughs> I think I had this. Is it? I'll look at a second. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? All right. 